Hello and welcome to IDFC First Bank presents Leaders of Tomorrow Season 11. I'm Sunanda Jay Seelan. On the show tonight, we're talking all things education. First and foremost, with one of the most outspoken voices in the field of education, that's none other than Gauri Ishwaran. Also, a conversation tonight with HCL Technologies to get their unique perspective on education. Education is the cornerstone of a nation's progress and it plays a crucial role in shaping the future. The key that unlocks countless opportunities, education empowers us to dream big and strive for a better tomorrow. The sector is currently experiencing a transformative phase with an emphasis on inclusive education and holistic development. Pioneers like Gauri Ishwaran have played a significant role in paving the path towards a brighter future over the last three decades. She joins us today to edify us on the prospects for the sector and the challenges that need to be mitigated. Gauri Ishwaran, uh, the Vice Chairperson of TGELF joining us here on the show. Ma'am, uh, thank you so much for taking the time as we're talking about education in the country. We're talking about the big ideas for a new India when it comes to the field of education. You have a long association really with uh, education and how it's being done in India. Uh, so my first question to you is uh, perhaps just to set the ball rolling for our entrepreneurs who uh, might want to refresh themselves on some of your achievements. Uh, what are some of the two or three uh, key highlights from your professional journey that you want to talk to us about? Well, I call myself an accidental educationist because I never started off life as a teacher. Um, I happened to drop my son at school when he was probably in grade four or five. And the principal of the school asked me to step in as a substitute teacher. And there my journey began. I have taught in Patna and in Delhi and finally I set up the Springdale School and uh, the government of India did decide to recognize my contribution and I was awarded the Padma Shri in 2004. You said something offline to me uh, which uh, uh, I found uh, to be surprising in the sense it's not a very popular opinion uh, but this is something I understand that you feel strongly about, that education no longer is just chalk and talk and uh, textbook knowledge is outdated. Can you elaborate a little more on that for viewers? See, education is life actually. So life is constantly changing and evolving. Similarly, education adapts, evolves and changes to suit the uh, community and society of that particular era. There was a time uh, when the chalk and talk method was very effective. But times have changed. And what we need today is people who think, who are innovative and who are creative. Now these things just don't pop out. You have, it is something that has to be built in through the education system at the school level. So the teacher today has to look at his or her role as a facilitator, not a classroom arbitrator. So what do, you, what do I mean by this? It's, it has got two facets to this. One is you make learning an adventurous journey for the children, where they can explore, where they can go and find out, where they can be curious. The uh, second aspect that you uh, look at is that as they step out into the world, their world is not just a little cocoon of uh, exams and tests and grades. Their world is much expanded to take in many other things. And remember, today children have so much of knowledge available for them so I think the teacher as a facilitator needs to guide and mentor children how to navigate this very complex world that we are living in. In fact, as we go forward, and you are talking about the future, 20 years from now, if you ask me what are the kind of jobs that will be available, what are the skills that you will need, I don't think anybody can have an answer. 
So we have to have our children future ready. And future ready is if they find life an adventure, if they are happy to explore, if they are happy to think of new ideas, if they are able to think of startups, if they are able to think of entrepreneurship, if they are think, able to think of innovative ways and solutions to social problems, this is what the future needs. And no matter what people say, the seeds for all this is sown at the school level. Ma'am, we have to talk about the NEP. And uh, while a lot has been done about its achievements and about some of its highlights, I'm curious to understand, uh, you know, there have also been critics of NEP and the way it's really been rolled out. Which side of this argument do you perhaps stand on and your views really on the NEP? See, the NEP has been a welcome change if you look at it in the, uh, the, in the larger picture because it has uh, brought in ideas about liberalizing and uh, promoting experiential education, giving more choice to the children in what they want to uh, select as their future careers. Um, teacher training. So there are a lot of good things in the NEP. But like all policy, um, it is also abstract in many places. So it is the interpretation and the implementation that will let us know how effective it is going to be. Since you're talking on technology, you know, technology, of course, is not a uh, cure all for everything and it can't be a one size fits all really and I'm sure you agree with that view and my question is since there's such an overload when it comes to the use of technology in the field of education your advice in terms of how one can pick what is right pick what is essential and leave out the not so desirable aspects really of technology and digital especially in education you are very right where this is concerned and this is not just par parents and schools have to work together because you know uh, children respond very well to logic so we have to explain to them logically what are the pitfalls and what are the advantages we have to help them understand uh, how do they you know like long ago abraham lincoln wrote in a letter to his son's principal you have to teach children how to glean the truth and to close their ears to the howling mob. So these are in things that we have to get children to imbibe. And this can be done as a collaboration between the parents and the children. And also remember, it is not just technology. Uh, one part of we, most people equate technology with, OK, you get information. But look at this, you have got that uh, chat GPT now Teachers are going um, literally loony because you just go and tell, uh, tell the uh, machine and you get your answer. So you don't even know whether the child has used his intelligence or his outlook or his opinion to produce the answer. So these are things that we have to look at very carefully. Secondly, cyber bullying. Uh, I don't think people really understand how much young children suffer when they are shamed on the social media. It's almost like giving them a death sentence because peer group acceptance is critical and crucial for our young people nowadays. Come back to the question of technology and really talk about uh, the adaption and the adoption and how it's being adapted. Uh, technology for non-metros because uh, this is huge market that perhaps is still being underserved as far as technology is concerned. And that really is also an opportunity for our entrepreneurs who are watching this interview. Uh, the role of technology when it comes to how it's being used in the field of education in the tier three and the tier four markets of India. That is a very interesting question. Because when we talk about the future of Bharat's position internationally and in the world, a lot depends on the young and we are, have the everybody says we are, have an advantage in our demography of maximum number of young people but for these young people to power india into a glorious future you need to reach education to the last mile the brookings institute in washington did a study 
and they said that if we follow the traditional path of opening schools and training teachers and building, putting up buildings, we'll take 100 years. So if we want to leapfrog into the future, we need to take the digital highway. The advantage of the digital highway is you can reach all the distant corners, you can impart education long distance, and you will pull our rural youth out of illiteracy and into the modern world. You know, then you can give them the skills that they need to survive, the skills that they need to find jobs, to, the skills that they need to adapt and be flexible, because we don't know what kind of jobs are going to be there. We have the fear of the AI also looming. So there are a lot of challenges ahead. For that, we need a generation of young people, educated, aware, able to think for themselves. And how are we going to achieve it in the traditional manner? I don't see. We are short of some 12 lakh teachers already. But if we harness technology, and India has got, we are full of smart boards and uh, various devices. If we, you put it all together, if we get our internet connectivity to the last mile, I think we can surely catch up and help our children from rural areas to also share in whatever good that comes through. And if India has to shine, you need to do this. I mean, this is my personal feeling. Ma'am, so good having you here on the show with us today. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a quick break. On the other side, Ritwika Gupta in conversation with HCL Technologies. Back in just a moment.